All right, hello everyone and welcome finally to my build guide for my Cobra Dash Trickster. And I don't really want to talk too much about nothing. Let's get right into it. There will be a video in the description for a showcase that I did live on stream. If you want to check me out live, I will be, will be on that every, every once in a while and last met with this character and uh, min-max it further. But let's get right into it. So, first of all, let's talk about Mark's solo machination and the interaction with Tempered by War. So what we get from this shield is basically that we can convert 50% from Divine Flash here of our elemental damage to Chaos damage, and then we get plus 5 to maximum chaos res. We will also get plus five to maximum chaos res again when we hit maximum energy shield. Our energy shield will go to zero and all our max res, we are currently sitting at 75 fire and 80 chaos will shoot up to 85 and 80 respectively. We don't need any cold and lightning resistance because we are also running numbered by one. Emperor War converts 50% of cold and lightning to fire, and we have 50% less cold and lightning resistance, but we really don't care about that because everything gets converted. We only have to care about fire and chaos resistance. It's a really cool interaction. Also, what we get from this is Val Pact, which is super good. We have insane attack speed. And yeah, that's pretty much what, what we get from, from the shield. It is really good. And a really cool interaction. Um, the only downside is we need a lot of chaos res, but I will get to that later. So let's go to get over all the points and the, and the equipment here. And let's take a quick look at the character again. So we are sitting with no flasks on around 15k armor here, 14k evasion rating. As I said, 80, 80 all res basically, and 85 chaos res, which is pretty good. The only thing that is um, that can really kill us is physical damage. Like this, we are sitting at 30, 36k armor, but the mobs are hitting really, really hard in these new maps with the affliction. The uh, tooltip DPS is around 200k, but I mean, that doesn't mean anything. In POB, we have around, depending on the setup, between 25 mil and 30 mil damage. With the Nimbus, I think it's doubled. I don't know if they overlap when they come back, but we will check that out later as well. Let's open up my, <coughs> excuse me, my, my small, my very small text document here, and let's get um, right into the itemization, what you will have to do and what you can expect in terms of budget. So first of all, the weapon, I mean, most important part, what do we do damage with? This weapon was, when I bought it, I think 19 divine, but it did not have hits can be evaded. It had, <coughs> no, sorry, can't see it. Second. So this claw did not have hits can be evaded. It had another craft on it. And for some reason, people with hits can't be evaded put up also for 80 divines and with other crafts lower. So make sure you look in, if you look for a, for a claw, you can either craft it yourself with, if you want tier zero attack speed, um, you can use Essence of Zeal for that and, and try to hit it, but it's, it's going to be tough. I would suggest if you can get it, get a... Get a pen base, fractured base, or yeah, a crit strike base is too as well. Even if you can get that as a base, probably can, right? Yeah, you should be able to. But it should be around 20 divines if you want to buy it. And it's pretty off meta, so it's like in comparison fairly cheap. Everything is super expensive this league. Next slot in plays is. If we can on as well. Hold on. Uh, 
Um, next in place is uh, our helmet. There is really, I don't think there's any cheap way of getting this. It's gonna be pretty expensive. If you wanna craft it, get the fractured base and just use Essence of Envy. We do really want this as Chaos, gives us a lot of mitigation. Plus one socketed AoE is not really necessary. You can just get get an evasion craft or anything else that you want. What you do need though is very high chaos wrath, but I will get to that later. On basically all the gear you can get, we have a lot of uniques. <coughs> Next slot in place. I mean we could talk about the shield, but it's very unimportant and uninteresting. Just get this shield, it's like 40 divine. Um, next slot in place is Ashes. It is hands down the best, the best shield you can get. Really make sure that you get enough quality because there is a threshold for where you can get another chain. So 30 qual is the threshold if you don't have um, 23 qual here. If you if you have 20 qual here, I think it's enough too for the threshold. Just got a 20, 21, 23, but that should be enough. Also allocate Whispers of Doom. There is really nothing else you can, can allocate here. Unless you want to mitigate your, your damage by a lot um, using your target DPS. Ring slots are very variable. You can run two Ventus Gamble, but then you won't have the, the Nimbus damage. I am running this currently because I think it's the best option in terms of damage and MF. What is really good for hard maps is if you run a uh, Nimis and a Death Rush. This is a very underrated ring. It gives you adrenaline. Adrenaline is really, really sick. And for mapping uh, three seconds on kill is basically up all the time when you're fighting. Also keep in mind that when you have Ventos here, you don't need any Cold Rest and you don't need any Lightning Rest. So it's going to be way cheaper. And otherwise, yeah, run two, two Ventus if you want. There is a couple of options still for other rings. If you don't want to want any quant, you can run a gift from above as well, which is a pretty good slot and a, a really, really cheap one. Otherwise, there's some other stuff you can do. You can get a rare ring with minus mana cost, then you can get your mana cost down to almost zero. But I'm going to talk about that later. Gloves. Look for a spell suppress base. And oh. <clears throat> look for spell suppress base, and you definitely need some kind of strength on here. Otherwise, you, you need the Chaos Res. If you want to craft this again yourself, craft it with Essence of Envy. So you get the, the maximum Chaos Res. This is really important if you don't run a, a Mage Blood, especially. If you run a Mage Blood, I think you can cap out fairly easily. I don't need A1 run rolls everywhere, but without a Mage Blood, look for, for this kind of rolls. Um, one Rage with hits no more than once every one second. It should be self explanatory, I think. There's basically no attack build that's not running this setup. And otherwise, to quickly cap out, spell damage, suppress, 7%. <coughs> could go even more, and then I could drop a node on the tree as well. Um, what's the next slot? Belt. Yeah, Arms Anguish. Hands down, in terms of damage, the best slot you can get. If you don't know what it does, it turns all your endurance charges into brutal charges, which give you 3% chance to deal triple damage per charge. It also gives you plus one maximum endurance charges. So we'll have four brutal charges, 3% 12% ch uh, chance to deal triple damage, which is really, really nice damage buff. You also get better, better crits then, right? Or like higher single hit damage damages and all damage can shock, which gives you more shock effect as well.
Next slot. Um, oh no, I forgot about to talk about Viscous. You can run, you can run Viscous Leash if you want the best um, MF and run one maps on ADHD. Yeah. You have to run if you run Viscous. You have to run two Ventors with Fire Res. Otherwise, you will not not get to max Fire Res. You you will get to max Fire Res when you have your Dying Sun running, but I think that's not really the most reliable option. So if you really want to want to be sure, get two Ventus Gambled and then get a Biscus Leash. This one is around 10 Divine. With the Implicit, for 5%, it's an absurd number, like 40 Divine at the moment. Or if you don't want to spend 10 Divine on this, this one is like 1 Divine maybe, if you want to get just get more Crit Multi or any other Implicit that you want on run. Belt, uh, belt. Boots. This is hands down the best slot. We get free endurance charges, frenzy charges, and power charges. If you want to run, if you want to run MF, obviously Goldworm is the best option. Twenty percent quant from boots alone. Goldworm is, is a really, really good MF item. Like if there is any slot you want to fill, it's probably the boots. Or let twenty percent. It's pretty good if you can fit it into a build. We could fit it in, but we will, would have other problems. I don't like. I personally don't like running it. You would also have to drop on Anguish. But for example, if you run this build with a Mageblood setup, which is a, a very viable setup, you can 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 drop these and get your and uh, get your friendly and power charges somewhere else. Especially if you run charms, you can get your power charges from from a charm, right? And yeah, and your friendly charges. You can get somewhere else from maybe Blood Rage or something. So body armor, there's also really not not many options here, like none, zero actually. This is hands down the best body armor you can get for this build. Twenty nine, over twenty nine edit chaos damage. There's nothing that can compete with this. Like zero. You can run a fourth vow once you stacked your your damage enough. I checked it out, but you will you will um, at minimum half your damage. But it will be way more survivability with a fourth one. That's what, what I tried out. But to be honest, just run the Covenant and get, just get a two, plus two projectiles. You can get a double corruption and anything good. I think crit reduction is pretty good this league. Then you should get that one. <laughs> right, Flask setup. Also, this is pretty straightforward. There's not really much to say. We, we get the Witchfire Brew. We do have. You will probably wonder why we do have manual cast here with this pair. Um, I will get to that when we get to the jewels, but it's basically to apply wither, because otherwise we can't. But this pair around us without self-casting it is really good. This is also an evasion flask, which is really good, and it also makes a smoke cloud on use, which is really good because it blinds enemies. Um, yeah, not much, not much sure. This is a Sip Knight flask. It lasts 10 seconds, which is also... And 30 qual, which is also very nice. Basalt Flask. This is the one that you could exchange. The attack speed is pretty good for for upkeep on on our Berserk. I will get to that later. But it, it is really, really good. Um, especially with the with the tincture that gives a thirty percent increased effect here. Very straightforward. Dying sun. We get more projectiles. We're running a Nimbus right now, so as you can see, we have a decent amount of projectiles already. But with the dying sun, it's plus two, and you can get it to plus three because we have tincture efficiency here with twenty percent. If you get twenty percent flask effectiveness, you can get three projectiles on this slot. And we're also running a granite flask. So I like sitting on high high armor. You can definitely exchange this. You could also exchange this for a uh, for a jade flask if you want to. A jade flask with attack speed. It might even be better. I haven't I haven't tried out. Um, but I was checking the POB and I think I like the numbers more with the buzzard flask. This is also running way longer. This is also the main reason. This is running way longer than the jade flask. I swap this one in when there is a lot of curses on the map or curses that, that are nasty. Then I just flip this in with curse 
reduction and we get, get a nice onslaught effect instead of the attack speed. <clears throat> Tincture, we're running all damage can shock. Rarity on this, you can drop rarity if you don't care about it. And 70% chance to gain one rage when you hit a rare or unique enemy. I would not... I would not drop this, to be honest. But what you can do is, if you really don't want to uh, want to run the Berserk setup, but I will get to that later. Um, there's some stuff you can do. You can get get onslaught here and damage pen. Right, this is, I mean this is cold damage now, but it should be it should be um, it should be chaos pen. If the map is if the map is is nasty and hard, I get I usually switch to this one. So then we would drop the rarity for onslaught, right? And we get basically ten percent, which is usually fine for a map. If there is shock reflection on the map, I switch this one in once I once I died once, um, so I don't reflect myself with shock. <clears throat> ideally, ideally I would have one. Ideally, I would have another one because. For this one, what I have to do is I have to go here, right? I don't have to, but I can. I can get rid of this. Then it's it's a bit nasty to to get this. Ideally, you can get get any other tincture. Um, but yeah, I, I yeah, this these mods are pretty good. So I just use the cutting strike one, even though I don't need it. Okay, I think that's everything for Flask for now. I will come back to some, some setup changes later that you can do. Um, let's quickly get into the jewels, what we want to do here. <clears throat> <coughs> all right, first of all, the normal jewels. We are very starved, very starved on intelligence. Like my build, at least. If you run a mage blood, it's a bit different. But I am very intelligent starved. So most of these will look something like this. Okay, there's no this 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 int on this right. And we are very chaos starved. So most of these jewels will look something like this: fire res, chaos res, classic configuration. And um, then I have a couple of int ones. I think there's no no int on here. I think I only have one int more. Yeah. So there's only this one. So apparently you only need one int if you have a good role on your covenant, that is. If you don't have a good role here, I think you need at least two. But that's it for the normal ones. Just get corrupting blood immunity. I mean you always want that, like one corrupted blood immunity, one chaos res, fire res. And I mean this is crit multi with code skills, this is useless. Um, but you can definitely find one. I did not find one, unfortunately, but you might now find one with a crit multi as well. So we are running a balance of terror. Oh, wait, was this overlaying here? Go back quick. Smaller. Actually, I should have just moved it to the other side. All right, let's quickly show you, show you the, the jewels again. So, okay, uh, fire res, chaos res, right? Ideally, crit multi. This one has chaos res as well. So it's basically chaos res on all of these. That's what they look like. <clears throat> for wither we are using a balance of terror it is a little bit annoying like if you want to drop this you can definitely drop this but ideally you would only want to drop it if you use charms <coughs> i think because um we we would we want to, we still want to use this when when we use tinctures we are running the the sit night flask when you run a you run a, a mage blood, you might want to drop this. 
But then you can also not... Now you gotta get this pair. No, I don't think you can drop this at all, to be honest. I'm talking bullshit right now. Um, but you can drop you can drop a balance of terror, and if you run a mage blood, you get way easier scale res on the tree, or from your um, from your flask, right? You will run an amethyst flask most likely, and I think you can get wither on your on your charms, but I'm not 100% sure. And there is small cluster jewels. I wrote it down here somewhere as well. There is small cluster jewels that give you uh, that give you wither. Even though I'm not sure how much. I think it's only five. What is the note called? Same. Yeah, everlasting misery. This is the one, right, that gives you five wither stacks at least. And with the mage blood, I think you can easily drop one of these jewels. All right. And next time, I really gotta get a fix, fix the setup a little bit. <clears throat> Not that easy to do. All right. Um, next thing. Yeah, the watcher's eye. Pretty straightforward. We need mana coast on the watcher's eye. Um. So we, we have a clarity, clarity Watcher's Eye and a Determination Watcher's Eye. Ideally, what you want is, unless you get enough Curse Effectiveness lowered with a Mage Blood probably, you definitely want rather want this node. I do have one to swap in, this one. So whenever the map has vulnerability on it, I swap this one in and swap the, the crit one out. But that's not something you, you, you would have to do. You could also get a double determination, which is super expensive if it even exists. Mm, otherwise, what you can get is, is Grace is good. And uh, Precision Flask upkeep is also good. So on this one, I have, whenever I flip this in, I add Precision. Precision is not really giving me much damage. It will cap out my a crit chance, but it's not really, it's very, very little damage, but this is very, very, very handy with the flask charges as well. Next thing, lethal pride. So, ideally you would get a lethal pride, but they are all, all 100 divine plus. You can get a lethal pride here. <coughs> With very good double damage node. So you could get double damage here, double damage here, double damage here, double damage here. I think there is one that exists. But it is very expensive. And otherwise, what you want to look for is this is fire. If you don't know how to search for a, for a lethal pride, you just go to this website here, right? It's in the, in the description. And you can search for mods that you want to have. And then you click the, the radius where you want to look for the lethal pride. And Look out what notes you want to get. Something else you can do here, by the way, and it's also something that I did not get because it's super expensive. For this lethal pride here, right? You can get you can get a thread of hope here. If you don't know what a thread of hope is, it will basically give you a radius in which you can allocate. So if you have a massive thread of hope, it will give you a radius here, and then there will be notes in here. This one, this one is allocatable, this one and this one, it will all be allocatable. And then what you could do is you get a third of hope here, you get a lethal pride here, and then you get a lot of double damage nodes within. But that's going to be super expensive. I think a thread of hope massive, massive ring is about, about 100 divine, and that's why I shied away from doing it. And I also think it's not, it's not very necessary. But it is, especially if you run charms, I think it's better for min-maxing, because you can drop other nodes. But yeah, definitely not necessary. And the, the build works perfectly fine without. Luster jewels. So this is what you want to look for without a mage blood because we are chaos starved. So we, we definitely want, you need to look for tier one chaos rest, right? If you look at my, 
if you look at my character sheet and if you look at my chaos resistance, you will get to 85 chaos resistance. So we are pretty tight already, and we do have a lot of, of jewels that give us chaos res. So keep in mind that you have to find a way to balance this out and get to 85. It's not that easy, but it is possible. And all these cluster jewels should be around 1 to 3 divine, I think. So for the large, we look for fan of blades, which is pretty self-explanatory. We will get we will get fan of blades. Oh, this to the other side again. No, not the whole window. Eh. So for fan of blades, we get additional projectile and projectile protect uh, project, uh, projectile attack damage with slaughter daggers. Obviously really good, you want as many of those as possible, so basically two, and then this node, fuel the fight, or smite the weak, these are pretty even in terms of what damage they give. Smite the weak would be better here, but only by, by a little bit, and back then I couldn't find one. This is very important though that you get four chaos rest here, and I think I also have four chaos rest down here, right? Yeah, I also have four chaos rest down here. So yeah, keep in mind when you do that, also keep in mind you don't know what a, a prefix or suffix is. You have to have with the wrong window again. Great. And ah, oh, okay. You have to have. You have to have both that you want to allocate as prefix. And so this is drive drive of the destruction. This fan of blades and the ones in the front that you want to allocate are both noted as prefix here. <clears throat> the, the suffix is always in the back. Same, same up here. Obelis, and I'm not dumb, fan of blades, you'll defy it, yes. So suffix is always in the back, keep that in mind if you're looking for the gems and you want to, want to min-max this, but either of these is fine. Either Smite the Weak or Drive the Destructor. I think I have the same here. No, I have Fuel the Fight here. Smite the Weak and I have Drive the Destruction and Smite the Weak here. Okay, Drive the Destruction is also fine. So for, me, for the mediums, follow through is very important. You 100% need this because this gives you your main damage. I think each of these nodes is like 15% damage because Cobra Lash works like you get more damage the less chains you have. And this adds up to it. Right? So Cobra Lash has like 11 chains now, I think, and it's 8% it's more damage per remaining chain. And this gives you also increased damage per remaining chain. So you get overall an absurd amount of damage from all these nodes. So you definitely want follow through here. What you get on the second node, I do like this repeater. It gives you attack and cast speed, which is also good for our uh, rage sustain. Big Berserk, we do have this this one, which is insane. I will I will um, I will link a clip how insane this is. Um, but you definitely want want a repeater or what is also good is one or two node streamline so you get projectile speed especially if you run a nimbus otherwise it's not that important i think <coughs> excuse me mm, i also run this node it's also more projectile speed i think it's, it's fine to take it you can leave it out if you want but it feels good for small cluster jewels i do have a sublime form up here, right? This is a sublime form. This gives you this to the other side again. Oh my God! No, I clicked the, the wrong window again. Big mistake. <clears throat> so this gives us fifty percent mana reservation efficiency on grays. We are running. We are very mana staffed here already. I would suggest that you get at least mana for two attacks. Otherwise, it can stutter. You have a lot of attack speed. Yes, you can sustain it with your with your leech, but there is sometimes a mob that leech mana from you as well. So I do need this node. Ideally, I would wanna I would wanna get rid of it. Also, you can get a better one here. I don't even have one with increased effect. There is increased effect of this, but getting chaos wrath plus increased effect is very hard to come by. So I don't have it. 
Um, and then there's also su suggestion. <coughs> you can drop it, and you have enough mana reservation. For example, if you run, if you run an enlightened level four in your helmet, I'm running an enlightened level three here. It might be possible, or some other setup that you're running. You can drop it. I can suggest everlasting misery. Because, um, misery everlasting, sorry. Because the problem is, if you get hexproof monsters on your map, it is fairly tough because spare is plus one hundred percent or even more damage. Right, reducing chaos resistance on on mobs is really really big. For you. All right, I think um, that's everything for the M setups. So let's go over uh, for the gem setups for the cluster jewel or for the jewel setups. Let's go over the gem setups. There's really not much to talk about. Um, most of these links are pretty self-explanatory. But let's get, get, get over the main, main link and what, what would be the best option here. <clears throat> so we have Cobra Lash, increased crit strike support. We do need both of these. These are the best, just the best damage options. Overall, Nightblade is main, really, really good. And we do run this is there's also no way around this. If you run with an aura bot, it might be worth to drop this or something else. But from what I could tell, not really. The problem is most aura bots run hatred and stuff like that. So maybe you want to go awaken chain here or something and drop void manipulation so you can do other damage. That being said, this is hands down the best slot. You, you have to get it. And I run Momentum. You can do damage on full life. Damage on full life would be the best, second best solution. The problem is if you run low on life, you don't have the damage at all, right? It can be a bit clunky. Also, also what you have to get, I think you, hands down, you have to get it, is the this note here. You count as, as on full life while you have a 90% maximum life or above. So it's another, it's another, another slot here. Plus, it is not that much better if you count all the rage sustain you get from here, and the movement speed from momentum also feels really, really nice. So I can only suggest running running with the momentum setup and not doing the full life. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. We have life tap, essence mark, and mark on hit. Basically, the standard thing. You can run. By the way, you can run um, what is called. Sniper's mark or the projectile explosion, basically. The problem is if you run sniper's mark here, you have to get a diamond flask to cap out to cap out your critical strike chance. And that is not really a good option. I I always want to get rid of my diamond flask whenever I can. But if you want to do it, you can can run a diamond flask and then run sniper's mark here. Right. Um, what do we have here? Yeah, Determination, Grace, Defines, Banner, and Enlighten. Ideally, if you can somehow get it, get a helmet with reduced efficiency, right? Uh, yeah, reduced, increased efficiency or 90% multiplier. But this was already 35 divines. So you can only imagine how, how expensive it's going to be if you want to get that. But yeah, I can definitely do some mana, more mana management and min maxing. That, that regard. Here we have faster attacks, shield charge, and frost blink. Keep in mind you can definitely run, you can easily run whirling blades here. Nothing wrong with it. I usually like shield charge more. But to be honest, back then when I when I was running dagger, it felt like I was running a white wind and no shield, and it felt really good to run whirling blades for some reason. Back then I really liked shield charge more. So try around what you what you like to do. Um and then I also like to run frost blink. I I just think it feels better than than flame dash. Keep in mind though that flame dash will burn down the vines, right? When you have a shrine that that makes uh, grasping vines, you can burn them with flame dash. You can't burn them with frost blink. So that's the downside of frost blink. But I still like the the more flashy flashy movement here. On our boots we have clarity, which gives us basically just this, right? We have Clarity Berserk, which is for this build. It is not necessary. You can run without Berserk. 
but it is really really good especially i think i think this the tincture is really really busted with the rage if you have not on all builds but if you have a lot of attack speed it's good and a lot of projectiles which we do have <clears throat> so berserk clarity despair We do need this, right, as an active cast, as a set to apply wither. We have a balance of terror. I think I said that already. I'm not sure. Go over it again. So this makes that you inflict wither for two seconds on hit if you cast despair in the past 10 seconds. And we will basically inflict, we have 10 attacks per second, roughly. You will you will have instantly maxed the enemy if you can hit him. One second. So yeah, every once in a while, every 10 seconds, you will have to cast a spare. If that's too annoying for you, um, I would make some suggestions soon, which you can change. We run precision here, mostly for for our, no, this is not the one, or oh, watch as I hear, if we run this, I, I will activate it. When I don't run this, I will not activate it for a little bit more mana, especially on, on Norwegian maps. It's a bit better for mana. But yeah, flask charge on crit is very good. Um, yeah, that was all. Oh no, actually, we forgot the gloves. We have ancestral protector here. I would suggest no, not dropping this ever. Right. Um, you can drop berserk as a set and get a get a chaos pen tincture instead, like the one. You can drop the balance of terror. Right, get the Get with us text elsewhere. There's definitely options for this, even if it's just five. You can even drop Valmor and Shell or Molten Shell and get Steel Skin if you really want as buttons. But I would not suggest dropping dropping the totem. I don't even drop the totem very often, but dropping the totem gives you 20% more attack speed, which is crazy. So cannot suggest also multiple totems is really good because the totem can be uh, can die can die very quickly and if you can you can put down three of those like this so you just click it twice right um you would just basically you would just do this and then you would fight in this direction it is it is very convenient it's, it's not that easy, that hard to do and you get a lot of attack speed so yeah, cannot suggest dropping totem totems. The rest, like if you don't like too many buttons, you can definitely. Do it. <coughs> all right, I think that's overall it for the gear and the gem setups and, and everything else. Hmm. I mean, the tree will be will be in the POB, right? You can just copy it. This is not, by the way, this is not a beginner's guide. I'm not gonna gonna spoon feed you a leveling build or a leveling tree. That's not my department. If you want to level this, I did, did this as a leak starter. Go here for the budget version, right? This is the real budget version, the elemental version. I started this, started the leak with this. It already felt good, especially with the Gull helmet. It is, it is really nice. Overall, the budget without a headhunter and a mage blood, right now I pumped around 250 to 300 divines into this build. That being said, I also switched out a lot of gear every once in a while and step, did some step-by-step -step upgrading. So I think if you do this efficiently and do 200 to 250 divines or even less, I think you can, can, I think you can get it with even less. Right? I, and, and like get it working, like overall working. I, I did the, the build transition with 100 divines. Thing is, on the main difference is when I did this with 100 divines, I did not allocate Whispers of Doom. I went with Cleansed Thoughts. If you don't know what Cleansed Thoughts is, if you can't cap out your Chaos Res, you can get this. Uh, oh god, the note is not really even showing here, right? I don't think the note is showing usually, but what Cleansed Thoughts does is it doubles your Chaos Resistance, and then it's easy to max out. Problem is, if you can't run Whispers of Doom, you will lose a lot of damage. And with a lot of damage, I mean a lot of damage. So Whispers of Doom is very, very mandatory for this build. 
to overall get it as quickly as possible. Um, all right, now the question, do you want to go Headhunter or Mageblood, right? And the quick answer is intensively, and if you're running charms, and if you like the, the charm inventory, and you like easy suppress cap and chaos cap, go Mageblood. Like, I mean, this is obviously only for the guys of you who have the budget. You can go Mageblood defensively, and in terms of movement speed, offensively, like hands down, Headhunter is, you've probably seen some of the streamers doing, doing fully juiced burial chambers, right? Like Fubgun is one of those guys. Headhunter buffs on, on the, the affliction on, on the affliction mechanic, mainly good. It gives you an insane amount of DPS. And that's also why I'm currently, like at the moment, I'm sitting at 68 Raw Divine. And next step is I will get a Headhunter and test it out very intensively. I did run a headhunter and tested it out once um, from my friends, but I didn't have not have a Nimbus back then. Everything, so yeah. but offensively for magic, fine and juicing as hard as you can. Get tinctures, get headhunter. You can get up to sixty six percent quant. If you go full quant with a headhunter. Um, this is a setup I would suggest. It doesn't mean you can't go charms and go go quant. There is a couple of different different things you can do. Um, these are all just suggestions here, but I think this will get you, if you know a little bit about the game, to get you started and what how you can can fix all the problems, right? So if you want to go max MF, you can drop ashes. I don't think this is a good idea. It's just such a good damage slot. You can drop rather cash for gold worm and, and get your charges elsewhere. That should not be a problem, especially with <coughs> with the um, charms. <coughs> Blood rage four. Blood Rage for, for your Frenzy Sustain, which is also really nice. Like if you, even if you only have, even if you only have Blood Rage, this node is so good on Trickster. 200% increased charge duration that you will almost never run out of Frenzy charges. They will last 30 seconds, right? Mm. Yeah, that which was taken, really broken gem. You can find the slot. You can get power charges, I think, on crit. Um, the downside is if you don't run Rala Cash, you won't have endurance charges at all. I mean, I don't have endurance charges either, but I have the, the Armed Anguish Belt. If I, if I change Shred Under, I will have endurance charges again, which is really, really nice, right? Endurance charges can help you cap out your fire res if you are starved on this, and endurance charges. Especially if you run the Rala Cash, it's basically always up. And endurance charges can can help you mitigate more fizz damage. Because the main problem still is uh physical damage. This hits uh, can 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 one shot you on big mechanic. <coughs> um yeah, you run divination distillate next to rarity plus panting to combined with petrified blood. I mean, this is what all the streamers do. Just just copy this. It's really good. And it feels really smooth. I already tested it out. Especially if you run with an aura board. And yeah, run two Ventus Gamble if you want to max MF. Ventus Gamble is no way around it. Like 10 quant and 55 uh, rarities. Just really good. Just keep in mind, you will have to drop a Nimbus. So if you have to drop a Nimbus, I can only suggest, if you can afford it, get a Headhunter in terms of damage. I personally, I, I really like playing with the Nimbus now, so I'm gonna, gonna keep it up for a bit. Um, and this strategy will be especially good if you just wanna run, run tier seven. By the way, I did this for a very long time with, with two Ventus Gamble. You don't need a Nimbus for this. You, your damage will be totally fine. Sometimes the mobs will be a bit tanky, especially in the Abysses. But on tier 7s, it's absolutely no problem. Yeah, how much MF can you get? Like around 66%. And I, I, haven't, I haven't calculated the, the rarity. If you run a Biscuit's Leash, I think it is around, let me lie, 70, maybe 300. Right? But it is very, very good. Can it, can it compete with a Tornado Shot in terms of 
In terms of damage with a Nimbus, I think it can. In terms of magic find, you cannot compete. Um, it will have like around 100 here, right? With an, with an amulet and with reeds, we're doing way better with it. Well, not way better, like a little bit better. But also keep in mind, guys, stacking too much quant is not really a good idea either. Right? There is diminishing returns, and I think around 30 to 40% quant is optimal. If you if you bleed, uh, if you bleed, if you build, if you build will suffer too much from too much quant, then it's not worth it. The thing is, headhunter is so far is so good. It is just so good that it it basically um, eliminates if you run run maps just run maps eliminates all the downsides, and is a little bit of a cheat code. And this is also a word of advice: make your character good before you buy a headhunter. I think it's not a good idea to make a character and for your, your gameplay and, and for your overall game experience. It's, I don't think it's a good idea to make a character that is very mediocre and then just smash a headhunter onto it and then uh, yeah and then, then basically stomp through the content. Um, at least I personally don't like it and it, it destroys. I think it would destroy my, my game experience a bit. Um, and also like your benchmark should always be something, getting something without a headhunter. And this build to do Ubers, I have not done them yet, but <laughs> I'm 100% sure I can easily do Ubers. I think Uber DPS is around 8 mil. I will post the build link in the description. And remember, there will also be there will also be a showcase. So I will actually link my, my live stream video and a clip in the description. And I hope I did not forget anything. If I forgot anything, leave a comment, leave a like, and please leave a subscribe. Um, I will try to, to stream more often and I will try, try to make more content. So I would really love to not do the work for basically for nothing, right? I, I love the game. I'm playing it since closed beta. And I, I really like to share my knowledge about the game and my, my experience. And I like to share They're the builds that I do and the progress that I do. And yeah, I hope I can can can... That can help help all of you out. Um, oh, I didn't talk about about the storm shroud. You can fit this in. This is really good because you can get you can get um, night immu immunity, right? But you would also need some some gems. But yeah, just a just a suggestion. I have I don't really have space to fit this in. So, anyways, I hope I did not forget anything, and I hope you liked the guide. This was. Pretty really long and intense. And uh, yeah, guys, see you on the next stream. I hope some of you will tune in and um, good farming. Goodbye.